It is Friday, June 4th, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. I hate to say it, but it was kind of a slow week for Linux news. Late last week, in a story that I seem to have missed, KDE released what is the first beta of KDE SC 4.5. So what's new in 4.5? They've added a completely reworked notification area. They've added KWIN tiling to allow users to automatically tile windows, which sort of bridges the gap between desktop environments that have tiling and between KDE, which didn't have it before. They've added the ability to replace the KHTML engine in Conqueror with WebKit. And a special focus is going to be on stability. The final release for 4.5 SC of KDE is due out in August. In an exciting change of pace, Google has announced that they will be releasing their Chrome OS in late fall of 2010. I actually haven't had a chance to look at Chrome OS in a while, so I'm excited to download a copy of it and just see how it works. Of course, the initial design is intended for laptops, but I believe they will be putting it on desktops in the long run. And in a move that I'm actually kind of surprised about, they say that all of the applications are planned to be cloud-based, including photo and video editors. That was actually one of the things I was really wondering about. Video editing on a PC can take a lot of resources, it can take a lot of time. Getting your videos to a cloud-based server could take forever and a day if you don't have a really fast connection. So at this point, I'm intrigued. I want to see what video editor they plan to use, how powerful it's going to be. But it looks like we've got a few more months to wait, so hopefully they'll flesh out the details between now and then. So you've got an Android smartphone, you believe that it's safe because it's Linux based, right? Well, you'd be wrong! Two security researchers from Trustwave have announced on the DEF CON website that they've created a kernel level Android rootkit. Basically, once this kernel module is loaded, an attacker could call using a trigger number and gain full access to the device. This could be used to read SMS messages, to incur long distance costs, and to find the GPS location of the device. Like I said, it is a proof of concept, so it's not like it's out in the wild, but it does show that it is possible. They're going to be demonstrating it next month at DEF CON. And the last bit of news I've got for today, Google has actually announced they're ditching Microsoft Windows in all of their offices. After some vulnerabilities in Windows and Internet Explorer left them open to attack in their Chinese offices back in January, they've decided they're going to be replacing Windows on all of their internal systems with Mac, Linux, or even their own Chrome OS. There's not been an official press release from Google about it, but reporters from the Financial Times have claimed that it's a semi-formal policy and it's not applying to every single computer's. They claim that getting a computer with Windows on it now requires CIO approval. Something else happened this week. What was it? Oh yeah, Ubuntu 10.10's Alpha 1 is now released. It feels like only a couple of days ago that 10.04 released, and now we've got an alpha. At this point, it appears that the alpha is mainly just upgraded packages on top of 10.04, but if you look at the blueprint list for Maverick, they've got a lot of things planned. They've got a lot of things already in the works. I'm actually downloading 10.10's Alpha 1 right now. I'm going to give it a shot and see how it works out. If it works out decently in VirtualBox, I might give it a review sometime soon. As a little update to one of the distro releases last week, Mego 1.0 releasing, I've actually installed Mego on my netbook here, and I've been running it all day. It's very nice at this point, it's got a great interface, it's kinda slow though, and there's not a whole lot of applications available for it yet. That said, it is still version 1.0, and I look forward to seeing where it goes from here. If you'd like to see me do a full review of this, I will definitely give it a shot. It's on the list at thisweekinlinux.com. Feel free to go there and vote for it if you want to see it. Well, like I said, it was a short news week, so that's all I've got for you. If you haven't seen them already, make sure to check out my Intro to Caden Live video from Monday and my OpenSUSE Distro review on Wednesday. Of course, I will be doing a live stream on Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And if you haven't already done it, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button up there. As always, though, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.